campaigns. These are the choices which can be so hard to make, to boldly play with no end point in mind. Today, while looking for responses to go along with our current global experience of RPG a Day 2020, I came across a question, a question for Fantasy Flight Games Star Wars, and I felt motivated to provide a video answer to it. What was the question, you might wonder? Well, basically, the question was, what do I do? If I start a campaign in Star Wars, what do I do? It's different from the games that we normally play, and I want to run it differently, but I don't know what to do. And I think this is a valid question. This is one I have heard echoed inside the group that I played Star Wars with, especially when it was time for them to step up and run some sessions. What do I do? Well, let's talk about it. If we're using the classic lines from Fantasy Flight Games, Edge of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, or Force and Destiny, the answer to what do I do is partially handled for us, but not completely. And there are partial solutions available, but not complete ones, particularly from the lens of we want to play a campaign. So what do I mean by that? Well, we've talked before about how Edge of the Empire is, of the three lines, the one most suited to open-ended campaign play. It's the Star Wars universe at the edge of the Empire, and go. <laughs> it's different from the way that Age of Rebellion is presented. It's very different from the way that Force and Destiny is presented. Each subsequent game becomes more narrowly focused on a smaller subset of interests, purposes, goals, and the like. So by extension, what do I do is answered more and more as we go through the lines. From Edge of the Empire, we exist on the Edge of the Empire. That's a pretty wide focus to try and navigate within, and so it's reasonable expect, to expect people to have trouble with that. Age of Rebellion, well, it's quite specific about how play works and what we're connected with and what we're trying to accomplish, so it's a little bit easier, and then Force and Destiny, easier still. But still, that specter of what do I do haunts us. So let's take a look at these potential solutions. Solution number one. The game is very specific about which types of characters, which careers, which species, which era. It's very specific about these things. And the mechanic that is a key point of who these characters are, being obligation, duty, and morality. These point our attention at very specific elements of the Star Wars universe to be important. And so, what do I do and what is play about is partially answered by those things. Right? The relationships between characters, what we owe each other, who is hunting us down? Who is demanding something back from us? Who do we think can help us so we can borrow from this person to maybe pay off that person and, and that kind of thing? Obligation is the drive that pulls us forward, and it's the thing that we're running away from while we're running to something else. And it greatly informs play. 
And so when we start thinking, what do I do? We can look at the different types of obligation that are presented as suggestions when we first build characters. And we start asking ourselves the five questions. Who, what, when, where, why, how, about these obligations and how they connect or how they may come to connect with our, our crews of characters in the future. If things go well, will they be in a position to pay something back or to fulfill a different type of non-monetary obligation? If things go poorly, will they need to go deeper in debt in order to stay afloat in some other arena? Obligation is something that should be expanding and contracting often. The game tells us, keep the players right, worried about their character's security. Keep the characters hungry. Looking at obligation, we can find parallels with duty. Both of these are, at their heart, a push and pull mechanic. There's internal motivation for the character to want to do something. And there are external forces causing or persuading or hounding the characters so that they must do something, whether that be avoidance or whether that be embracing it. Running from a bounty hunter, for example, in Edge of the Empire, or taking a mission fulfilling a need in the Rebellion, for Age of Rebellion. And so, when we start thinking about what can we do, we can look at mission-based play. This is something which, at least in my experience, we will start to move away from in Edge of the Empire as the characters become more experienced as they make more connections, as they build networks of people that they get along with and people that they don't. But mission-based play is going to remain an integral part of Age of Rebellion, as, for all intents and purposes, the characters are, in one way or another, associated with a, an organization that functions like a military. Now, they might be spies that are you know, embedded in a cell somewhere in some vulnerable population that needs protection from the depredations of the Empire, but still there is a chain of command. There are things that need to be done. There's a, a need-to-know environment, which lends itself quite readily to mission-based play. So let's look at mission-based play. In Edge of the Empire, this would be taking a contract. Somebody wants something. They don't want to do it themselves. They want you to do it. Or do they? Do they specifically want you to do it? And I think this is our first kind of fun thing to look at when we ask ourselves, what can we do? Well, instead of putting a contract in front of the group, just like a, a purchased adventure module or something along those lines, we can instead come up with a couple of different contracts, and these are different employers out there looking for things to be done. But those employers have no idea at the moment who can accomplish those things. And in essence, we bring in something that I enjoy bringing into games quite a bit, and that's human relations, human resources, management. They need to hire someone appropriate to go out and do the thing which means there are interviews. Maybe they've heard about you from someone else, and maybe that report was mixed, and it's not like they can ask you for your criminal resume, but at the same time, they want that face-to-face -face meeting to decide whether or not they're going to trust you with their criminal enterprise in Edge of the Empire, or their, their desire to do an end run around... Uh, Galactic Empire regulations, that kind of stuff. Or in Age of Rebellion, maybe you really want to fulfill 
this particular mission on this particular planet to help this particular group of people, but the brass isn't too sure that you're the best choice. And you can see where I'm going with this. There is interesting role play and story potential in the jobs that you don't qualify for, the missions that you will not be assigned, and what are you going to do about it? Are you going to go off and try and do it anyway? Are you going to try and improve your reputation or status? Are you going to take jobs that you don't want in order to develop exposure to skills and develop new talents and, and new abilities that will open up these newer, more lucrative contracts or these more personally important duty assignments? Right? The universe, the galaxy, the situation that the characters are in it's not a single-serve adventure format. There are hooks, there are opportunities, there are missed opportunities, there are people who don't want to work with you, people who don't trust you, people who don't value the skills that you're bringing to the table. Right? And that, that envy, that drive, that hunger, or that passion for duty, those things can drive play for quite a while. Right? I want to get back in you know, some hut's good graces, right? But all the work is drying up. What can I do? Maybe characters being pushed to go into business for themselves. Maybe members of the Rebel Alliance towing the line, you know, for a while, biting back on all those retorts that they'd like to make. You know, all of the deviations from the mission profiles that, that they want to make, all the terrible risks of lives and equipment that they feel compelled to do in the moment. Maybe all of those things can be ridden for just a while longer until they can be the ones making the decisions. Right? There's a lot of role play potential in there. So we can look at contracts or missions as not necessarily the thing that you prepare this week to put the characters in, but instead we can look at a set of missions that are coming due now, a set of contracts that are available now, and put the onus on the characters to qualify for them, to get hired, to get assigned. And if they don't get the job that they want, or if they don't get any of the jobs, what are they going to do about it? They will have spoken to many different people. They will have encountered their obligation out there or the push and pull of their duty out there somewhere. And what are they going to do about it? Play will already be in motion and be arising around you. So your, your preparation will, as we've been saying a lot lately, connect to your ability for improvisation. Let's go on a brief tangent just for a moment. All three game lines have put out published adventures. So we could... And that's where it breaks down with campaign play. There aren't enough published adventures. Even if you like them, even if they turn out to be successful for your particular group, there simply are not enough of them to be a campaign, to be an open-ended, ongoing campaign. And when we talk about open-ended campaign for Edge of the Empire, regardless of what's going on in the Star Wars universe in terms of events connected to the films, open-ended has an awful lot of open to it. It can go on and on and on, regardless. Age of Rebellion? Well, once the Rebellion has dealt with the Empire, if you know your characters survive long enough to, to reach that point, then it stops being an Age of Rebellion and starts becoming an Age of Rebuilding. So that game does have a finite ending point before transitioning into something else which is more open-ended. But whatever that game is, that's in your hands, whether you just transition to Edge of the Empire as people drift away from the Rebellion, or do they take on more responsible positions 
and deal with problems that don't necessarily involve flying squadrons of X-Wings versus squadrons of TIE Fighters or, or what have you. The rebuilding can be just as exciting as the rebellion. But finding your way into that, well, that's on you, and that's cool. And then Force and Destiny, again, there is that open-ended nature is there regardless of what's going on in the Star Wars universe. As far as the Star Wars universe of the films of cons are concerned, characters like the ones we play in Force and Destiny don't really exist. They're not a part of the stories. They're just out there somewhere. <laughs> but for our play, there may be quite a number of Force-sensitive characters hiding out, on the run, doing what they can, moving from place to place. And there's a lot of situational storytelling that can go on. There are an awful lot of television shows based on this theme. The uh, television version of the Hulk from long, long ago. Any of the versions of Kung Fu, Kung Fu, Kung Fu the Legend Continues, this kind of stuff, uh, are built uh, along similar lines. Uh, the Fugitive, so on and so forth. Stingray, Knight Rider, <laughs> the A-Team. We have a, a lot of different type of, of episodic, yet somehow connected, ongoing um, television stories, books, uh, that have this kind of character. The character who is from a more, let's say, more capable background or has access to tools and training that the people around them do not. And so the the onus of responsibility for action, for right action, or for betrayal, falls on them. And they are the focal point of these, these crisis points in time. But the focus is very much on them and their personalized and individualized struggle. And there may be a point in play where we feel like we've reached an end. But in all of these cases, the published adventures don't come anywhere near close to the amount required for ongoing campaign play. And while they may provide a spark, or they may provide an interesting challenge to spice things up, or they may provide an opportunity to serve as a benchmark, so how, how are our characters doing compared to other characters who have uh, been run through this in different campaigns at different tables, that, that kind of thing. They cannot uh, be your campaign. They cannot be the thing that you do with your specific group. They're welcome to be a part of it. So we can, we can look at them very, very differently in that regard, rather than something that we want to complete, something that we want to move through every scene of, something that we are going to try and, you know, herd and corral or expand and make more interesting, and, you know, all the different modifications that might be required in play. We can look at them much more as toolkits and suggestions and uh, a model for how to build different locations around our personalized version of the galaxy. And that's very liberating and very helpful. Now, we haven't forgotten Force and Destiny. It's still out there, but it has the most personal of these mechanics. It has morality. And when we are preparing for the environment through which the characters are moving. This is something that is very much on their minds. They're, as characters, they are opening themselves up to the Force. They are being mindful right, of the Force. Maybe some of them are being mindful of the living Force. Maybe some of them are trying very hard to deny aspects of their personality. Maybe some of them are flirting with the destructive side of the dark side, or maybe some of them are completely misinterpreting what it means to be a calm and centered practitioner of the light side. 
Maybe you've got players who simply don't get the idea of the force as a duality, who are arguing for or lobbying, lobbying for a game change so that there is a gray side to the force where they can do what they want. Right? Putting them in a position where they need to or they have the opportunity to come into contact with ideas that their character is struggling with in situations that expose their dark side. Situations that expose who they are as, as beings of light. So that choices need to be made. Difficult choices. They need to hide. They need to seek out information so that they can expand their understanding of the Force. Well, those are two urges that run counter each other. I have to lay low. I have to hide. I need to protect myself. I need to restrain my use of the Force. But at the same time, I'm compelled to learn more and do more. And these people around me need my help because the galaxy is crumbling under the weight of the cruel oppression of this incomprehensibly evil galactic empire. You cannot be a force sensitive and not know this is going on around you. And you cannot have a position of power, even if it's just a little bit more power than the person next to you because of your attunement to and access to the Force, and then do nothing. What does that do to the person? What do we see? And in continuing to see it and in refusing to act, what happens? Is our refusal to act tantamount to being a part of the crimes that are being committed? And we can then see how the, all of this hooks into morality. By risking ourselves, by being altruistic, by going out and laying ourselves on the line to help those who are being oppressed by the empire, we are forced to use the force more often to save ourselves and to save them, which puts us at greater risk, which brings about more violence, more violent acts, more desperation, which affects our morality. And doing nothing is exactly the same, except more insidious. Both give us the opportunity to challenge, to explore, to experience morality. And that is definitely answering, what do I do? And so, this is a big topic. And when we're planning out campaign play, we can't really be sure at the beginning who these characters are going to be after a few sessions and after a few sessions more. We can't really know how the events of play are going to inspire ideas about what could and should happen next. And we are hoping to encourage that spark of independent action inside the playgroup so that they don't see mission assignment or contract availability as something that they must do, but something that they can try for. And that their, their quest for greater understanding in Force and Destiny is an undeniable and inescapable call that is going to shape them, force, and destiny. Anyway, there's a lot more to be said about this, but at this point, we'll bring the video to a close. It has been a while since we spoke about this fantastic series of games, and there'll be more. <laughs>